Welcome to Prime Cut, Default Prime's weekly video game news roundup. I'm your host as usual, Stephen Snake, Duke and Lindsay, and on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the latest rumors for the PlayStation 4. Also, we got details on the last heavy hitter for Bioshock Infinite. Also, we have news on Baldur's Gate coming to the iPad. And lastly, we have details on how Journey is the fastest selling PSN title to date. So without further ado, let's get right into this week's episode. With the likelihood of the next generation of consoles coming sometime in the coming years, rumors have been flying about them here and there. The latest rumors involve the next PlayStation, which is being currently called Orbis, which translates to the Circle of Life. The circle of life. One of the rumors include that the processor will be AMD and will be able to have a resolution of 4096 by 2160 or have 3D games playing at 1080p. Now on the scary side of the rumors that is making everyone in the world panic on the streets is that the rumors that the PlayStation 4 will not support used games. Just like how the rumors involving the next Xbox also won't be having used games. And also the rumors involving the PlayStation 3 not having used games. In this rumor it also believes that used games will have a trial with them but to unlock the full game, you have to pay a certain fee to unlock the game. As for other scary news for people, but not really all that surprising, is that rumors say that the PlayStation will not have backwards compatibility. You know, like the latest PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 models. The last nervous point involving these rumors is that the system will require constant internet to work. Considering most of us likely are always connected to the internet anyways, this probably isn't going to be the biggest issue itself. Till, you know, if you're like me and AT&T randomly drops your internet out of nowhere, and then you have to wait till the internet's fixed. But again, these are just rumors. And when have rumors ever been right? I will admit, hearing that Max Payne's multiplayer would feature bullet time kind of had me confused. Anytime bullet time is activated, Max reaction and perception would increase, and thus, everything around him would slow down. But that easily works out in single player. The issue with it being in multiplayer is, how do you make it so that one player's perception is slowed, but the other player's perception is normal? As, technically, wouldn't all players be affected by bullet time being activated and one that cause some type of slowdown on somebody's side? Well, Rockstar's workaround to that is only those in the player's sight activating the bullet time will be affected by the bullet time. Now, other info revealed in this latest trailer involves two game types, Gang Wars and Painkiller. Gang Wars is more or less red versus blue, while Painkiller features two players taking up roles as Max and his partner who are heavily armed and have several painkillers. Those that kill either one of the two will then be transformed into that character and will be the target of everyone else now. All I can say is that I'm still excited for this game. Now if only I had the money for that new tower to place this laptop because I want it on my PC. In the past we revealed that Ashura's Wrath would feature some DLC that would pit Ashura against Ryu, but there is more than that coming out. Released this week was episode 11.5, Forging Ahead, which is an anime episode that gives more details in what is happening between episode 11 and 12 in the full game. The price is $1.99 or 160 Microsoft Fun Points. Now coming out on April 3rd is episode 15.5, Defiance, which will be released in another anime style episode with the same pricing as the previous episode. Now a few weeks later on April 24th is when the playable DLC happens to come out. With a four episode bundle and called Nirvana, the bundle will continue the story of Ashro's Wrath and serve as the true conclusion to the story. The bundle will cost $6.99 on PSN or 560 Microsoft points. And internet, let me know if I should be angry about that or not. Next, coming out on May 8th, is the DLC that we've been talking about, The Lost Episode 1, at last, someone angrier than me is the DLC fight that pits Ashura against Ryu from Street Fighter, who I kind of doubt is angrier than Ashura from what I've seen. Unless we count evil Ryu. 
This battle of crossovers will cost you $1.99 or 160 Microsoft points. And finally, on May 15th, Lost Episode 2, The Strongest vs. The Angriest, will find Ashura fighting Akuma because, well, why not? If you have Ryu, you gotta have Akuma. Well, at least these DLC aren't too expensive. In previous weeks, we've told you about the motorized patrons, the handyman, and the boys of silence. The newest heavy hitter is the sirens, which hopefully won't be as annoying as those from Mass Effect 3 can be. In Bioshock Infinite, the sirens are beings that can raise the dead. And you know who you gotta call? Ghostbusters! Actually, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. Technically, they would be zombies. As the sirens can raise the dead, this, just like in other games with similar enemies, makes you ponder which is more important to take down. The weaker enemies that it can just reanimate, or go after the tougher one so no more can come back. Now this is the final heavy hitter, at least we revealed at this time, so we have a general idea of the big boys and girls will be taken down on October 16th. Lightning has already made an appearance in a previous DLC for Final Fantasy XIII 2, but now she shall be appearing in another DLC called The Requiem of the Goddess. Currently there is no screenshot or even major details involving this DLC, but we do have two pieces of info. First is that this DLC will feature Lightning going against Caius in some type of different form of battle. Now this could possibly be anything, you know, like card battles, chocobo racing, or maybe even an epic rap battle of history. Now, this probably would be where I put in a pathetic attempt at a rap battle for comedy's sake, but I have no idea about the Final Fantasy XIII universe, so I'm not even going to go there. The other news is that this will be coming out in May, though we're not exactly 100% sure if that's in all regions or simply just out in Japan. Now, we're expecting more info and clarification to be coming from Square Enix soon enough. Finally, a Persona character that I remember from my brief time of playing Persona 3. The new character to play as in Persona 4 The Arena is Elizabeth, with her Persona of Phantos, as well as... Labrius? Is that how you pronounce it? Making a parent with her shadow self. As most of us are likely not living in Japan, we'll be having to wait till August to even get to play this game. But if you are in Japan, then you'll be able to play these characters in the arcade soon enough. It was just a few weeks ago that BaldersGate.com ended up being revived. Now many people were excited and hopeful that this would mean that there will be a Baldur's Gate 3 coming soon, but instead we get the enhanced edition of these games. That wouldn't be too bad. And then on the 21st, these pictures appeared on the website showing us they would be coming to iPads. The game is being created with the iPad 3 in mind and shall be using the Infinity Blade engine. And if you're someone like, say, myself, that has only an Android tablet, you're probably feeling left out as you usually always are. It appears that in the recently released demo for Dead or Alive 5, it has some info in it that tells us all the characters that are going to be in the full release game. While the game features several of the old DOA characters, also including my stress-inducing opponent of Alpha 152, it features two new characters, Mila and Rig. Also, we know who else is joining Akira from Virtual Fighter, and those two that are joining are Pi and Sarah. Now, as this list is found in the demo of the game, some of these characters could be removed, or even some more could be added. We just have to wait till September to find out for sure. Splinter Cell has never quite been a series that I could get into, until the recent one. Now word is that the upcoming Splinter Cell Redemption, which is the unconfirmed title for the next game in the series but kind of sounds reasonable because all games go to the redemption route, is planned to take steps back to its roots. Now to be precise, Jade Raymond states, It will have all the action flick elements for sure, but we're going to also explore something a little bit more interesting that is actually one of the themes that's at the root of the franchise historically, but never has been surfaced so much. I can't really say more on this. Hmm. One that has never surfaced so much. 
Like how come the noise the night vision goggles make never draws attention? Seems like any other little noise does. But the next installment in the series hasn't got a release date just yet, though certain rumors seem to think that it might come out this year. So as it gets closer to release, we can expect news on what this actually might be. On Dark Souls' Facebook page, they've been teasing for an upcoming announcement for fans of the game. There's an app on this page that features a brick wall, and the only way for fans to break down this wall is by liking it and wait to see what lies behind it. Speculation on what this announcement could be ranges from people believing it to be some type of DLC, while others believe it could be the PC port of the game that several have been asking for. In fact, 90,000 people have signed a petition to bring it to the PC. Now, the only way that we'll know what is behind the wall is to really wait and see. It's so hard to do. So, you know, I got an idea. Let's put in Pink Floyd's The Wall, skip to the trial, and let's have the judge usher to tear down the wall. That's not going to work now, is it? Minecraft has been a major success for Notch and the fellows at Mojang. It's gone on to win awards, is now available on mobile devices, and it's coming to XBLA, which we now know is coming on May 9th. Now, the XBLA version of the game will feature a new crafting interface, smoother controls for the console, a tutorial that many have requested, and also will feature split-screen co-op. Now, as I have the PC version of the game, I think I'll probably just stick to the PC version. Journey was released not that long ago. In fact, it's only been about two weeks, and it's been quite critically acclaimed. Besides being critically acclaimed and featuring the ability to find certain celebrities in the gaming world without even knowing that it's them, it now holds the title for the fastest selling PSN title. The previous title with that accolade was Infamous Festival of Blood. Now, if you still haven't played the game yet, I wholly recommend that you do. It's quite an experience and one of the very few times that I don't panic out when I see other players online due to the ingenious way players communicate in the game and not worrying about them saying stupid and mean comments to me. And with that, it brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. Now, to be up to date on all the gaming news out there, follow us over at defaultprime.com. And now, to be up to our videos, subscribe to us here to be up to date on our indie game highlights, prime cuts, and our other occasional videos that we may put up. Anyways, as I always say, and too lazy to figure out something new, till next time, gamers.